So my name is Krishna Mainini, and uh, this is a project that started about uh, three months ago, a little over three months ago. I posted the offline fourth. So for many years, I've been um, using uh, switching back and forth between fourth and uh, R for doing various scientific computing type of tasks. And one of the frustrations that I had with uh, trying to do some things in fourth is that uh, there was not a good uh, base of quote code that I could use for solving certain types of linear algebra problems, numerical linear algebra problems. And I'll talk about that here. Uh, and so about uh, sometime in June of this year, I started to write some of my own code. Uh, and then I realized that, of course, there's this large library called IcePack that was developed back in the 1960s, the 1970s. And uh, so maybe it was worth an effort to port some of those routines to forth. So with that, uh, let's see, how do I advance? Uh, OK. Here's the overview of my talk. Uh, I'm going to briefly talk about numerical linear algebra source libraries for scientific computing that exist out there. And uh, these are widely used by both commercial and open source packages. Uh, and then we'll talk about what's present in the fourth scientific library. Uh, there are a number of linear algebra modules, but also what's not present. And I'll just review uh, some of the basic forms of uh, the types of problems that we can solve and that are of wide general interest. Uh, even though I use the term scientific computing here, I really mean um, numerical computing, which is applicable in engineering and economics and operations research and a wide variety of topics. Uh, so it's not by any means uh, restricted to some uh, esoteric scientific research. Uh, so I'll give an overview of IcePack and my goals in porting IcePack to fourth, some of the challenges of uh, taking the original source libraries from unstructured Fortran to fourth. Remember, this is uh, the first release of this package was in like 1972. So uh, Fortran 77 wasn't around then. <laughs> uh, status of IcePack uh, port to fourth. Uh, so this is within the last three months, what have I done and what remains to be done? So uh, let's basically look at the history of some of these large packages that were developed uh, by the scientific community. Uh, at government labs in the U.S. and also with the collaboration of uh, university researchers. So I was actually surprised to find that IcePack, which solves uh, eigensystems of equations, uh, a particular type of problem, which I'll describe in a little bit at more detail, uh, that was actually earlier than LinPack, which I didn't expect, which is a the more common forms of linear systems equations uh, solutions that, that one encounters. Um, and it's actually, uh, it actually, it, the experience with developing IcePack at Argonne National Laboratory, which is outside of Chicago, and of course with collaborators from Los Alamos uh, and other places, uh, fed into the later development of LinPack, which was started at uh, Argon as well. And um, around the same time, uh, the, the, the BLAST package, the basic linear algebra subprograms, uh, were developed at JPL uh, to provide fast vector operations. Uh, and that, the, those were incorporated into LinPack. And ultimately, both of these two packages were integrated into LAPAC, including BLAS as well. And so this is, the LAPAC is the current standard um, and it's used widely in uh, packages, commercial packages like MATLAB, also Mathematica and open source packages like R. Um, 
Um, and they have their own wrappers uh, around the underlying routines within LAPAC. So even though the first release was in 1992, it's still pretty much the standard. Uh, it, and of course, it's been developed since then. So the, uh, a lot of the factorization that went into LAPAC uh, in order to be able to uh, code the underlying functions for fast operation on modern hardware, uh, which was supported by this BLAST level three, uh, it, it makes it uh, makes it quite fast and it in integrates all of the functionality of LINPAC and ICEPAC into it. So if we just look at ICEPAC by itself, um, it uh, it's actually code that was translated from ALGOL to Fortran, uh, and now, of course, uh, my goal is to translate a good good bit of it to make it provide that functionality and forth. Um, and one of the nice things about these packages, because there were uh, it was a systematic effort on the part of uh, researchers at a national lab, along with the university collaborators, are there's they're well documented and well-tested source libraries. So uh, one can go look up original papers or books that were written that serve as guides to using these. So the documentation is not a problem. Some of the early history of the development of, of all three of these packages is, is uh, there's a nice art interview with Jack Dungara, uh, who worked at Argonne National Lab as a student first and then as an employee. Uh, there's a interview with him. And, and, and so if you're interested in the development, the history of the development of these packages, that's a nice uh, interview to read. Um, the, the last uh, original level one stuff is documented in a paper by Lawson and, and his collaborators. That's from 1979. And then the algal routines that originated with uh, uh, this book, Wilkinson and Ryan's Handbook for Automatic, Automatic Computation. Uh, so that's, that's where those routines may be found. So one of the things about ISPAC is it doesn't make use of BLAS, which, you know, there's a large number of routines there. Uh, LAPAC is a very complex system now because of all of the modules that go into it. And so if I wanted just to solve eigensystems of equations, uh, and I wanted not to deal with the underlying complexity of LAPAC, for example, if I wanted to uh, take a LAPAC library, a compiled library, and, and call individual routines from uh, a fourth interface, fourth library interface. Well, it's still quite a bit more complex than just considering translating some of these routines. So that's the, that's actually the method I've adopted. So let's uh, look at what's available in fourth right now, and namely in the fourth scientific library, which appears to be a dormant, uh, project now. Uh, now, I'm not criticizing it by any means. I use it quite frequently. Uh, it has a lot of good stuff in it for doing scientific computation. And uh, for numerical linear algebra here, are the various modules uh, that can be used to deal with matrix equations uh, and performing uh, operations on, on various operations on matrices like obtaining their inverse or um, obtaining a determinant. Um, Gauss-J is one sort of grab bag of various things. I think it's not well factored uh, in the sense that it's probably like three different modules uh, that, that are combined into one. Um, so anyway, all of these, these modules provide some functionality that would be provided by LINPAC. 
and the ice pack functionality is completely missing from the FSL. And that's been a frustration for me for a number of years. And so I, back in June, I started writing some of my own code and, uh, uh, and then looked at forwarding ice pack in, into Ford. That was the impetus for it. And, but it had been something that had been bothering me for years that there was no such uh, you know, functionality in Ford uh, in any existing library that I could find. I think maybe Marcel Hendricks has had something in i Ford, but it's not uh, it's not publicly available. So, so let's see here. So I give the link to the Worth Scientific Library here. <coughs> so let's look at two common types of linear systems problems. Um, so the first is the typical linear equation solution where we have AX equals B and uh, both A and B are given and we're trying to solve for X. So simple cases, this linear system of equations where you have uh, two unknowns, x0 and x1, and you have equations like this. And in matrix form, it would be written like this, following the ordinary rules of matrix multiplication. And so uh, there are ver various ways to solve it. Uh, of course, one could obtain the inverse of the matrix A and multiply both sides of this matrix equation, but that's generally a bad thing to do. Uh, for in numerics, uh, if you were doing it uh, with perfect precision math, that's fine, but uh, typically you're not. And so you run into problems when you try to use just simple inverse and matrix multiplication. Um, so if you take the uh, module Gauss J from the FSL and it has a word called Gauss J, which does Gauss Jordan elimination for solution of equations. That's the algorithm that it uses. This is the procedure that you would use typically. So um, you declare two matrices A and B and you'd stuff the data into A and B in this manner. And uh, then you would call uh, Gauss J using A and B and then the, the size of the matrix equations and the uh, and the number of vectors that you're solving. Uh, and you can print out, and so what it does is it just replaces the B vector with, uh, or the B matrix with, with the X values. And so you can print the solution by printing B at the end, and you, you'll get the two solutions for X zero and X one here. And you can verify that those are the solutions by putting those back into the two equations. And a geometric way to picture this is this, this is the equation of two lines in a, a, in a rectangular coordinate system, and you're looking to see where they intersect. You're trying to find out what the X and Y values are for their intersection. Um, so it's, it's oftentimes useful to have a geometric picture, uh, although you can scale this up to any arbitrary dimension uh, in general. And, and, and then uh, you, you might have a, instead of a two by two matrix, you might have a, a 20 by 20 matrix and then a, a 20 by one matrix here. So um, you'd want to be able to solve those types of equations as well. Generally though, you don't have, uh, the complexity of the matrix is, a, is, is going to be, um, different as you scale up. So the other type of problem is where you have an equation like AX equals Lambda times X. Here, you're just, you have the matrix A given when you represent it as a matrix equation. And you're trying to find the, the scalar values Lambda and the vectors X that uh, satisfy this particular equation. So a simple case is 2x0 plus 3x1 equals lambda times x0. Um, and, and then the corresponding equation here. Uh, and the matrix form is given here. So you don't know, obviously, 
anything on the right hand side. Uh, and this is the eigensystems problem where you're trying to determine both the vectors and the corresponding values of lambda that would satisfy this equation. And, and this is important in a number of uh, case types of problems that, that commonly arise in science and engineering and uh, in other, other fields. So the way that, that ice pack, uh, in ice pack you might do this is using their routines uh, called TRED2 and IMTQL2. So again, you define a two by two matrix A and uh, here I'm just putting the values in. Uh, they go in real, real order here, the way that F put is defined. Um, and I have to declare some other auxiliary arrays. Uh, and these are, these are the FSL conventions for matrices and arrays. So that's, that's what I'm using here. Uh, you have to define a diagonal and a subdiagonal in another matrix to receive the eigenvectors, uh, as they're called. The lambdas are called eigenvalues and the x's are called eigenvectors. And there's a correspondence between each particular eigenvalue and each eigenvector that satisfies it. So the first step is to use the, the TRED2 routine to uh, transform this matrix so that it becomes diagonal. And what, what it means to transform the matrix or, or Oh, actually, to try diagonalize it, but uh, and uh, I won't go into that right now, but we can talk about it later. Uh, so once that step is done to transform the matrix into tri diagonal form, and on a two by two matrix, you can't really illustrate that easily, but uh, then this other uh, ice pack routine, IMTQL2, will take a tridiagonal matrix and find all of the lambdas and the eigenvectors X. And so once we call that, we can print the error code. And really, you should have an error check to see it, to make sure the error code is zero. And then if, if so, then you can go ahead and print the uh, the diagonal array, which corresponds to the uh, eigenvalues. And so this particular matrix has these two eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvectors are stuffed into the OT matrix, which uh, in the form of column vectors. So the first column of this matrix corresponds to the eigenvalue minus 0.162 and the second eigenvector corresponds to the other eigenvalue. And uh, so that's how this, uh, these results are interpreted. And you can actually put these back into the equation to see that they solve, solve the matrix equation. So these eigenvalue problems are, are missing, uh, the, or the routines for doing this are missing in, uh, in the FSL and in general. So the ice pack uh, library is, a, is described as being a systematized collection of uh, subroutines in Fortran, which compute the eigenvalues and or eigenvectors of six classes of matrices. So many physical problems uh, fall into these six categories. Uh, of course, general matrices are included here. So you can have a complex general matrix where there's no apparent structure in the elements of the matrix. You can have something called a complex Hermitian matrix where um, there's a sort of symmetry about the diagonal where everything below the diagonal is uh, the complex conjugate of everything ab above the diagonal. You can have a real symmetric matrix uh, and here it's uh, just everything below the diagonal is the same as its mirror image from the opposite side of the diagonal. You can have a real symmetric tridiagonal matrix where everything is zero except for the diagonal of, uh, of, the, of this square matrix and the first two subdiagonal. Well, the subdiagonal is the, the lower diagonal element of the matrix. 
below the main diagonal and then the, I guess the other one may be called super diagonal. It's the one above the main diagonal. Uh, and uh, you can have a, a special, real special tridiagonal matrix. Um, and uh, I, let's see, I believe this has to do with being probably being either asymmetric or being a very large case where the matrix, you don't store all the zeros in the matrix. You, you store it in a special form uh, where you're just basically storing those three diagonals and subdiagonals. So um, the guide to ice pack um, here is uh, you can, this can still be found in um, uh, let's say on Amazon or uh, other places. Although I think uh, I don't remember when the last printing was, but it is still available. It provides uh, the r recommended calling sequence of routines and all the routines uh, from the August 1983 release can be found at, at NetLib in the ISPAC directory. So if you download this presentation, you know, that link will take you there. Um, and so for a, a real general matrix, if you want to find both the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors, you would, you would follow this calling sequence here uh, in order to obtain the results. And of course, you know, there are arguments here, which, which will receive uh, the, the results that you want. And uh, so that's all documented in the book. About half of this book are Fortran listings, uh, but the first half of this book is, is, is primarily a guide to the routines. Um, and, uh, I think I omitted a error check after one of these routines that that's, uh, part of this recommended calling sequence, but just for as compactness here, but the fourth version then for doing the same sort of thing would be to call words with these same names. And of course their parameters would be on a stack. Uh, so that's that's the design. Let's see. I keep wanting to hit page down instead of this. Okay. Uh, here are my goals in porting the ice pack routines to forth. The first and foremost thing is that we need some eigensystem solvers uh, for whatever computing we're doing in forth that requires them. And um, it won't, you know, one can take the uh, approach that, okay, I could compile this library from Fortran and uh, then I can make hooks to from forth into it and call the routines, which is an acceptable approach, except it's not particularly portable since we don't have a common uh, library, external library interface. Uh, it's much easier to, sim to simply load these uh, these definitions, definitions that are, are, are part of the ISPAC subprograms or subroutines. Um, and then it's, there's a tremendous ease in debugging these uh, to, in, in case you, you find something wrong uh, by having the source code and working with the source code directly. And then one of the main things that I've found is, especially with the FSL, having the source code gives me the ability to modify and adapt the code to special situations. And there have been several times over the past 20 years where I have done that. In fact, both for differential equation solutions under, under certain conditions. Uh, and more recently, I found that one of the integrators, uh, one dimensional integrators, I, I thought, well, let me see, I should be able to use this to do a two dimensional integral, but it, it didn't work. And the reason was one of, one of the words was not re-entrant. And, and so it was a very simple matter to make that word re-entrant. And, and so all of a sudden, this ability that we didn't have in the FSL, namely two-dimensional integration, it was just a simple fix to something that was already there. 
So I, I think, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of source libraries because if you want to understand the code, improve it, adapt it, well, that's uh, the, the source library gives you that, that ability. Um, so one of the challenges here is, of course, translating unstructured Fortran to structured Forth. And uh, once we do that, then I think the source itself is much more comprehensible, at least the program flow is much more comprehensible. Um, and, and then uh, we also want to work with FSL style matrices and arrays so that we can kind of work in that ecosystem and uh, make use of all of the other things normally, you know, in computing the elements of a matrix that you want to solve. There's things like integration and or maybe solution of differential equations uh, that that are required to compute those matrix elements. So um, I also want to provide test codes and uh, examples of use for this fourth version of the library. And then check the results of fourth computations against the original Fortran. I thought this was going to be simple originally, but it, it turns out that the code that's available from NetLib is uh, won't won't compile with G Fortran, uh, GNU Fortran. And I'm not sure if there's some switch. I, I tried compiling it with various switches for. Uh, older Fortran, but none of them seemed to work. And then I looked at what was causing the errors and by making a few changes, I was able to get them to compile. But um, that turned out to be an extra headache is that what what's available at NetLive may not compile uh, and build uh, with the modern Fortran right now, even though it's supposed to go all the way back to Fortran 77 and compile that code. It has a switch for that, but this was written before Fortran 77, and I'm not sure that the, the code that's released on NetLive has ever been ported to Fortran 77. So, okay, here's a look at a particular example, this IMTQL1. I think this one is for finding eigenvalues of a matrix that has been tri-diagonalized. And uh, so you can see the Fortran code and the, and the con flow control structures here. There's lots of go-tos here and unraveling what the structure of this code is from, uh, from these go-tos is, is not that trivial. That's not the only thing that's not trivial, of course. But for example, you might think, OK, I just have a do loop here. But that's really the part of a, a hidden begin structure. Um, and then there's a do loop underneath that. Um, so you can tell because you know, there are these various places where you're going back to the loop. Uh, to, and uh, so I have to mimic that with this. Well, I have to structure that with a begin repeat and a, and a do loop inside of that. And then there's another, uh, there's another loop that I don't show inside of here, but then Here's a place where it jumps out. Uh, this is like jumping out between separate branches of a, a multiple while structure. <laughs> so uh, in this case, I had to invent a little extra uh, uh, value to keep track of the fact that I had this. Uh, uh, when this condition occurred, I, I needed to switch or a, a flag that I can check. And so I could put these two things in here to handle this underflow situation. And then, um, yeah, pretty much after that, it's, it's, it continues uh, more or less like it's shown. But going from here to here, <laughs> took some time, uh, let me just say that. And then there's always some questions about whether you did it correctly. Of course, Fortran um, uh, on its loops, uh, on its arrays, its index starts at, at one. So uh, here, the FSL arrays start at index zero. And, and so I 
I did translate it so that you know you can use use uh, index zero here. Uh, that just makes it easier for setting up the arrays. So those are a couple of the challenges in this. Um, but we got rid of all the line numbers. Everything is is structured here. And uh, and then the question is, does it work? <laughs> so here's the status of the port currently since uh, about June 2nd. Uh, well, a little after that. Uh, these are the individual uh, subprograms, and there are roughly about 70 subprograms in IcePack, but not all of them are necessary in order to get the functionality of it. Uh, because it, if you remember, I said there are six classes of matrices that, that it's set up to solve. Um, and with what I have done here so far, namely here are the ones that are that have been completed, the translation's been completed, and the testing has been done. Uh, and uh, then there's demo files that show you know how to actually use them. Uh, they already solve the complex Hermitian cases the real symmetric and the real symmetric tridiagonal cases. So just with these uh, six, six modules, uh, I'm able to already take care of these three cases. Uh, these others that you see in progress or, or the translations complete that ha they haven't been tested yet, they will take care of the real general matrix case. So we're already at a point where we can start to use these. Uh, and this code that's been translated can be found here. Uh, and I'm not putting it within the FSL uh, uh, subfolder. I'm creating its own li library directory. Um, so I think the FSL, it's I don't, uh, that's another topic for another time, but uh, there's there's no growth in that, and there's no way to make changes that it, that I know of that's easy. So anyway, this is where we're at uh, at the moment, and where we're going to go is uh, okay. Complete translation and testing of the words needed for real general matrices, and you know, I think a reasonable target is the end of this year for me to complete that work, given where we are. Uh, and then the next big thing will be the translation of uh, work of the subprograms to words for solution of complex general matrices. That might be a considerably larger effort, maybe take me a good bit of 2023 to go through. Ultimately, I want to make sure that we have demo programs that serve to both test and illustrate use of ice back and forth, and that will have to come at some point. And of course, you know, there's there's no amount of testing that will ever prove that you're you've done all of this correctly, but you can certainly gain a lot of confidence by going through test cases. Um, ultimately, the applications that you can right based on this port or are the payoff and um like i said you know eigenvalue problems are, are present everywhere and mechanical engineering failures are particularly uh, sus the failure of suspension bridges due to uh not having modeled the um the resonant frequencies of, of the mechanical structures, uh, which turns out to be an eigenvalue problem, uh, is uh, yeah. those are well documented cases, but uh, there are lots of lots of uh, applications for these uh, this type of code. So I guess one other thing I want to say is uh, I mean, so when I say that these have been translated and tested, that may mean one of two things. 
or both, uh, is that uh, there is test code within that uh, source for that particular module. Uh, and there's also an illustration of its use uh, within some demo program. Uh, so if all of them have demo programs that uh, all of the ones that are completed and tested have demo programs. Not all of these have test code within their modules, though. So, um, so that's the end of my talk. Well, you thank you questions? very much. It was very interesting. Let me open the questions uh, by by saying this was a wonderful talk. And if you think you cannot change the FSL, I think you are the most qualified person to change the FSL. And as the current champion, I think has uh, retired from force. Uh, you are you can just take over and make your own fork, and I guess we will use it. And I'm really looking forward to the non-scientific examples, because I remember there are some very practical examples for the eigenvalue problem. Like I once found it uh, in very basic image processing and and stuff like this, where you just wanted to find or like. Finding the frequency of a QR code is very easy with eigenvalues, uh, I think, right? Uh, I believe so, but I don't, I, you know, I, that's going a little bit outside of my knowledge. Um, yes, certainly there's, there are tons of mechanical uh, engineering and science uh, issues. One, one thing, you know, my background is physics. One thing is if you had a rigid body, if some strange shape you want to find the principal axes of rotation of that mm. um, that's an eigenvalue and an eigenvector problem um, so uh, that's one that i'm familiar with uh, quantum mechanics uh, the complex hermitian case is is the most important case uh, so the uh, eigenvalues are are essentially the energy levels of, of uh, allowed energy levels of whatever quantum systems uh, that that you're trying to uh, model. So, so yes, uh, those are those are some of the examples I'm familiar with. But uh, ultimately, I think you know once we have, in particular, the one that for the general real matrices, uh, we can start exploring some of those, uh, writing some demonstrations of those. Can I maybe also ask you about the readability in the force syntax? How do you feel about that? Because I think that, as you said, the flow of the source code library was much easier to follow in your side-by-side -side example than the go to right. to the left. But how do you feel about the real applications compared to oh. using it in Mathematica or stuff like this? Uh, and so the problem with something like Mathematica or MATLAB is you can't look into their underneath their interface right. to see what's underneath. So it's hard to know what's actually going on. And I had this issue with, uh, with you know, I, I use forth a lot of times to model something. And, and sometimes I ask one of my colleagues to check what I've done in MATLAB and, and see if he's getting the same thing. And well, they don't quite know what it is, the algorithm that they're using ah, underneath. Right, right. And, and, and so when we get something that differs, uh, you know, so far it's turned out that my fourth code has been right <laughs> that used the FSL. <laughs> Very cool. So, uh, okay, I think because I know what's happening there. Th that's a very good reason. Bob, I think you had a question. Yeah. Um, some of you may know that um, Cozy well, I, I left Fortran for APL in the mid-70s when uh, they uh, got it on the uh, CDC 6600 at uh, Northwestern. And uh, one of the reasons was I could go and write a, a, a definitional fast Fourier transform in one line in APL. And I didn't have, by orders of magnitude, I no longer had time to go and spend in Fortran. Um, but uh, COSY has evolved from a, that lifetime since then in APL and then uh, following um, from, that's Ken Iverson's APL, 
uh, to uh, Arthur Whitney's K, which is simplified from that. And um, Cozy is very simplified even from Arthur's uh, K and um, is in open fourth. So um, I've, and it, the, the array, everything's a, everything's a list. Um, um, so I have not revisited, I've not needed to go and uh, do things like um, eigen function, eigen vectors and so forth. And one of the things, well, the header of a cozy object is a, a three, three cell header is type uh, count how many items are in, and then and then um, reference count, which handles the uh, memory management. Um, but to have list and, and a, a list of lists is, is type zero, and I just have integers. I do not have complexes, and it'd be great if somebody was motivated to add complexes. But to add types is is relatively easy. But the thing is that you can. You can write these definitions of, um, well, anything as, as succinctly as you can in a textbook. And answering yeah, that. Yeah, let me, uh, let me interject here. Yes, in the higher level languages like MATLAB and Mathematica, you could code this in a much simpler fashion. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Because you're not using vector type of uh, operations here. You're using arrays, yeah. but you're not doing full vector type of operations. So it would One look my, simpler, but yeah, uh, my motivations in those in, higher level languages. Um, it, my motivations in, in in splitting with with Arthur, and really it's been the last close to a couple of decades now, um, was to have it in open fourth, because fourth is fundamental, uh, and and uh, you know on the on the machine end. So the issue of whether or not you have a uh, an algorithm correct or whatever, um, one of my aphorisms is the code is the theory. Take a look at the code; it's all open, and if you can improve it at any level, or if you yeah. need to go and make it specific, or move it to some other hardware or to an array of processors on an FPGA, that's the motivation for having gone and 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 created. This all in 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 you know, open open yeah, forth. Yeah, and and I, and I want to say that this is by no means the end of the code. But what I'm looking to get to is a base that has been tested and from which you can then modify into some other form, uh, and and know that you started with a base that works. So you can you can compare every subsequent change to that. For example, one of the things I realized in doing this translation was I needed an F plus store, like we have plus store for integers. That makes the reading of a lot of these lines, like this one and this one, much, much simpler if I had an F plus store. Uh, and so I added it later, but I think this was one of the earlier translations, and so I didn't, uh, I didn't have it. But there are ways to make this code read simpler with right. uh, some additional floating point words. I certainly agree. Yeah. That's a very good new baseline. Uh, Klaus, you also had a question for Krishna. Um, yeah, not, not really a question, but I would like to take the opportunity to point out to you uh, a solution to the elimination problem in vector multiplication. Um, the the problem is um, you if you multiply two vectors, then the first product of the first two elements may be something millions, and then the second may be 0 0.5, and the third one may be minus 10 millions. And what is the result? All of a sudden, the result is zero or not 0 0.5. Yes, the, so the that, people who design ice pack. Uh, wrote their, well, the algorithms that they're based on are designed to handle those yeah, types of... They better, they better do so. But there is a yeah. general solution to the problem, uh, which is a hardware solution. And Professor Kulish from Karlsruhe has proposed this maybe 40 years ago or so. Uh, 
and uh, he has made uh, a hardware prototype of this. So the idea is very simple. You introduce the vector multiplication as a fifth undivisible operation in floating point. And what it means is if you start the vector multiply instruction, you just stream in the, uh, the elements you want to multiply. And inside of this multi vector multiplication box is an integer accumulator. So as long as you are multiplying, everything is accumulated in this integer accumulator, which if you look at the size of the floating point numbers, of the IEEE floating point numbers, this is, I say, just 2000 bits long. So that is well within reach of today's FPGAs already. And then at the end of the, when, when you have streamed in all, all the elements of the two vectors, then you do adjust a final uh, a conversion of the internal integer number that has been accumulated into a floating point number. Mm -hmm. And that would, that makes handling complex floating point operations so much simpler because all of a sudden the, the all the know-how that is needed how you do have to do things like in maxwell equation solvers in order to not run into the elimination problem all this know-how is no longer uh, needed and that by the way is uh, by providing hardware that has very high precision, you're able to reduce the complexity of the algorithms that you need. Exactly. You, you okay. just can sit down and, and write the Maxwell equation as it is written in the textbook mm. without having yeah. to think a lot about uh, in which order <laughs> and what you have to do in order to get around uh, all the numerical problems. Well, the eigenvalue problem, eigenvector problem is challenging. Um, it involves doing series of linear transformations. And uh, so you might be able to uh, reduce with specialized hardware the complexity of the algorithm, but there's still quite a bit of complexity within the entire algorithm for finding these solutions. So that part you're not going to get rid of, but we're, we're aiming to do things on traditional computers. I mean, that's what this is designed for. Um, so late pack of course is, uh, will let you replace the uh, underlying basic linear algebra subprograms with specialized versions. If you do have specialized hardware, and then you can make use of that. Well, I think certainly make, taking the black box away from MATLAB and Mathematica is a wonderful task because I remember when you couple something together in MATLAB, you cannot get it to run anywhere else easily. That is, Un unless of course you use all of their tools, then you can. 